Okay, uh, good morning class. <coughs> so maybe we can start the tutorial session today. Now, um, we call that in the worksheet uh, last week, we've worked together on some exercises about constructing confidence interval from a single sample. Now in this worksheet, we will explore how we can do two sample comparisons by calculating a confidence interval for a difference of the population means or a difference of the population proportions. Now here is some summary of the formula that you've learned, you can find them in the national notes. So it is just a summary. So there are different scenarios in which we will use different formula. For example, if you are, no, you are told that you have two independent samples drawn from normal distribution. You are told that they are drawn from the normal distribution. With the means variance given by mu x mu uh, sigma x square, mu y sigma y square. Then if we want to find a confidence interval for the difference in the population mean, the reason of calculating this confidence interval is that we would like to compare the population means of these two populations. Then, depending on our information from the population variance, we will have different formula. In case if the population variance are given, they are known, then this will be the formula we use because we can compute the standard error directly using the long population variances. Now, notice that this is the sample size of the X sample. This is the sample size of the Y sample. Sometimes in some test book or some, in some other notes, People would like to use different symbol. Okay, they may use n and m instead of m and n. You need to keep in mind that this represents the sample size corresponding to the x sample. This represents the sample size corresponding to the y sample. Now, if the population variance are unknown, they are not given, then we have two different situations depending on whether you assume that they are equal. If the population variance are unknown but they are assumed to be equal, then we have a common estimate of the population standard deviation because that's only one population standard deviation if you assume that they are equal. And we'll estimate them using a so-called pooled sample standard deviation which is computed by using this formula. And then the confidence interval will be constructed using this formula. And the quantile here Use is no longer the normal quantile. Instead, we will use the T quantile. And the degree of freedom, uh, because for calculating the T quantile, we need to specify the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is the combined degrees of freedom from the two samples. Now, if the population variance are unknown and you are not assuming them to be equal, then the formula will be similar to this one. Except that the unknown population variance are estimated using the sample variance. And the normal quantile will be replaced by a T quantile. But this time, the degrees of freedom of the T quantile will be computed using this complicated expression. We call this the settle ways approximation. So, this is how we find the confidence interval of the difference of two population me means under different situations. Okay. You can find all these formula from the nationals. <coughs> now, there are other situations that you are not told that the samples are joined from normal distribution, but we can still approximate by using the normal distribution when the sample size are large enough. So if you have two large independent samples from unknown distribution, uh, the distribution are not specified as normal, but you have large samples from them, then to find the confidence interval for the difference in the population means, uh, we'll use very similar formula as before. You can compare the formula you've seen here and the formula here. The only difference are the quantiles. In case when the population variance alone, we'll use the same formula. In case when the population variance are unknown but assumed to be equal, we will still 
compute a sample, full sample standard deviation. But this time in the confidence interval, the t quantile will be replaced by the normal quantile. Because when the sample size are large enough, the t distribution will become the normal distribution. And similarly, if the population variance are unknown but are not assumed to be equal, we'll use a very similar formula as this, but with the unknown population variance replaced by the sample variances. And this time, you don't need to use the t quantile because for sample, large sample, uh, the t quantiles will become the normal quantile. So this is this will be the formula. In case when you are not told that the population are normal distribution, but you have the large sample, then to compare the population means, uh, we will use this formula. Now to for doing two sample comparison, sometimes we will come we we'll like to compare the population proportions. So suppose you have large independent samples from two population, two binomial distribution, with their own population proportion, PS and PY. And we may want to compare these two proportions, PS and PY, by calculating a confidence interval. And this will be the formula. Okay. And again, this M and N are the sample sizes of the two samples. And this H bar and Y bar will represent the sample proportions of the two samples. And the quantile we use will be the local quantile. So this is just a summary of the two sample comparison formula, the confidence interval formula. <coughs> now, in this worksheet, there are most of the questions are related to the application of this formula for doing these numerical computations. So maybe we can start with question number two. Okay. So in this question, you are given some information about the lifetime of two blends of light bulbs, and we would like to compare the lifetimes of these two blends. So just try to construct the confidence interval required under these two different uh, assumptions. Making use of the formula I've shown you before. <coughs>
Okay. So let's, um, I would like to show you a little walkthrough to this question. So the first step, of course, is just to find out the sample statistics given in the sample, in the, in the question. So we have two samples of light bulbs, plan A and plan B. So we locate the sample size of the A sample, uh, 150 light bulbs. So the sample size for the first sample is 150. And the mean lifetime, so the sample mean, 1386 for the first sample. Standard deviation, 114 hours. So this is the sam sample standard deviation of the A sample. For the B sample, we have 200 light bulbs. So the sample size is 200 for the B sample. Sample mean, 1218 hours. And the sample standard deviation, 98 for the second sample. So we can find out this sample statistics. But in the question, the keyword normal is not mentioned. So that means we are not told that the samples are drawn from normal distribution. We are not told that the lifetime follows the normal distribution. But we have large samples because the sample size are quite large, larger than 100. And usually, for a sample size larger than 25, sometimes we we'll just regard them as large samples. So <clears throat> we just try to find out the formula that we need because we are constructing confidence interval, comparing the mean lifetimes. So we need to find the confidence interval for this. And since we are not told that the samples are drawn from normal, but we have large samples, so this will be the formula that we need to use. And for, because the population variance are unknown, uh, we are only given the sample standard deviations. So we need to estimate the population variance by the sample variance. So this will be the formula that we need to use. Whether we, if, it, depended, it depends on whether we assume them to be equal or assuming them to be not equal. <coughs> So, if the population variance are not assumed to be equal, this will be the formula we use. We start with the difference in the sample mean, plus minus the normal quantile, multiplied by the standard error of this, which is the square root of the sum of these two terms. So the sample difference in the sample mean plus minus. Now for a 95% confidence interval, the alpha is 0 0.05. So the normal quantile is the 0.975 quantile from the standard normal distribution. You can use the table or use the R. You will find that this is still 1.96. And then multiply to the square root of each sample variance. Now this is that we are given the sample standard deviation. So you need to take the square of it to get the sample variance. Divide by the sample size. And this is the sample variance of the B sample divided by the sample size of the B sample. Then the rest will be within computation. Expressing it as an interval, it will be from 145.26 to 190. So 
So this is numerically how we can find the constant interval of the difference in the population needs. Now after we do the calculation, of course, we also need to interpret the meaning of this confidence interval. Now a confidence interval is used for estimating unknown parameter. And the unknown parameter that we are estimating is the difference in the is the difference in the population mean. So in other words, we are estimating the value of this difference by using the range of these values. So all the values in this confidence interval are greater than zero. And actually at least will be at least 145.26. So in other words, the interpreter of this interval is that mu s is significantly larger than mu y. Or maybe I use mu a and mu b. Because we are comparing the lifetime of light bulbs of these two brands. So the mean lifetime of brand A is significantly longer than the mean lifetime of brand B by at least 145 hours. This is how we interpret the confidence interval. So always keep in mind that if you want to interpret a confidence interval, you need to understand the meaning of the confidence interval. It is a range of the value that we use to estimate the unknown parameter. And since the unknown parameter is a difference, so that means we estimate that this difference is at least 145. <clears throat> now in case when we assume that the population variance are equal then we'll use this formula we'll use this formula now notice that this is not the t quantile it is long quantile because we have large samples so the first step is to compute a common or pooled sample standard deviation using this formula. Maybe I use NA and NB. So this is the formula for calculating this pooled sample standard deviation. So we put everything into the formula. Just keep this uh, square root here. So after we calculated the sample standard deviation, the common sample standard deviation, we need to put into the formula for the confidence interval. This is the formula if we assume that the population variance are equal. So it is just like we have estimated the population variance by using the common sample variance. And then we extract this out of the square root sign. For the normal quantile, it is also 1.96.
So we do the similar calculation. We can get a constant, which is quite close to the constant interval we computed before, when we assume we didn't assume them to have equal population variance. And the interpolation will be as the same before. The interval are all positive. The values in the interval are all positive, indicating that the mean lifetime of blank A light block is significantly longer than Van B by at least 145 hours. Is there any question? So this is just a very typical problem and question on comparing the population mean using confidence interval. Now you may try to work on question number four. Also a similar question. The crucial point is to start with finding out the correct formula to be used under the situation and the information given in the question. <coughs>
Okay. Um, actually, this question is quite similar to the previous one. Uh, we, according to the description of the question, uh, we are already given the summary statistics of the two samples. But we can see the keyword here, low mobility distribution. So we are told that the response time are low mobility distributed. And also, we are told that the population variants are unknown, but we have common. Common means we assume that the two population variants from the two populate the two of for the two samples are the same. Okay? But it is unknown. So we have low mobility distribution. We have unknown population variants, but equal. So the formula we used will be quite similar to the previous one. But this time, we don't have large samples because sample size are only 12. And therefore, this is the formula we need to use. So we have the same formula as before, but the quantile, instead of using the normal quantile, this time we need to use the T quantile. So once you can identify the correct formula, the most appropriate formula to be used, everything will become straightforward. So we use the formula for a 95% confidence interval for comparing the mean response times for the two treatments, treatment A and treatment B it is equal to the difference in the corresponding sample means plus minus the t quantile uh, I use this kind of notation maybe I use consistent notation in the question so we have s1 bar, s2 bar the two samples difference in the sample means the sum of the sample size minus 2 which is the degrees of freedom of the t quantile Because we have assumed that the population variance are the same, so we need to use the pool the sample standard deviation. So we need to compute SP. We substitute everything in the question into this formula. We have 12 minus 1 multiplied to the sample variance for the first sample. Again, don't forget to take the square because you are given the sample standard deviation only. And for the second sample, the sample variance is 7.5 square. So this will be the full sample standard deviation. <clears throat> so the confidence interval will be given as the difference in the sample means. Oh, sorry, we need to also compute the t quantile first. So the sum of the sample sizes minus two, the degree of freedom is 22. One minus alpha over two is equal to 0.975 because we are, the coverage we need is 95%. So you can use the T distribution table to find this number or you can use the R. No matter whether you use the table or use R, you will find the same number, 2.074. So we substitute everything into the formula. T 
This is the difference in the sample means plus minus the t quantum for the sample standard deviation and the square root of the sum of the reciprocal of the two sample sizes. And we can obtain this confidence interval. Now to interpret this confidence interval, as I mentioned before, just think about what this confidence interval is estimated. This interval provides a range of values for us to estimate the unknown parameter, which is the difference in the population means. But this confidence interval, unlike the previous question, in the result of this confidence interval, it contains both negative values and the positive value, and also includes zero. So in other, in other words, we use this range of the value to estimate the difference, but this interval contains the possible value zero. So zero is a possible value for the difference between the two population means. So in other words, there is no enough evidence for us to rule out the zero. Okay? Based on this interval, if I tell you that the difference in the population mean will be somewhere between this and this, then it, there will be still no way for you to judge which one is larger. So in other words, it is possible for them to be zero, for them to be equal. We cannot rule out the possibility that they are equal. Uh, in statistical jargon, usually we say that there's no significant difference between the two population means. So the comparison is inconclusive. If you find an interval like this. Now we still have a little time, maybe you can try to work on question number five. Now this time, we're working on population proportions.
So uh, because time is not enough, so maybe I'll just show you how we can work on this question. But it actually is quite straightforward. What you need to do is to determine these quantities. So in the question, we have two samples from uh, two groups of voters from California and Colorado. So the sample size are always given in the question. But we need to, because we are constructing confidence interval to compare the population proportion, this is the formula we need to use. Although the symbols used are a little bit different, but you need to understand the meaning of the symbol. Right? So the sample proportion for each sample can be determined by the number of vote, voters. So in the first sample for California, out of these 288 voters, 141 of them voted in the presidential election. So that means the sample proportion of voting proportion, the sample voting proportion in California is equal to 141 divided by the sample size 288. It is approximately equal to 0.4896. And similarly for the second sample for Colorado, the sample proportion is 125 125 voted, divided by the sample size 216. So the sample proportion is equal to 0 0.5787. So once you obtain the these quantities, then you can just put everything into the formula. Comparing the two population proportion of the voters who vote. First we compute the difference in the sample proportion. Plus minus the normal quantile. Now for the 95% confidence interval, the normal quantile is 196. So it is a magical number we always use for 95% confidence interval. And then 1 minus 0.4896 is 0 0.51 divided by the sample size, which is 288. So we substitute everything into the formula. Do the calculation carefully. Then eventually you will find this in the form. And to interpret this confidence interval again, since all we make use of the, our understanding about confidence interval. Since all the values of these intervals are negative, so it suggests, suggests that the estimate of P1 minus P2, the P1 minus P2 will be a negative value. So in other words, P1 is significantly lower than P2. Uh, the voting percentage in California is significantly lower than the voting percentage in Colorado. Now, I, I see some of you have done the calculation constructing the confidence interval for P2 minus P1, okay? So you can also compare by constructing the confidence interval of P2 minus P1. Then, after you do the calculation, you find that the interval, all the quantities will be positive. But the conclusion will be still the same, will, cons uh, will be uh, equivalent. So in other words, if you are asked to compare two samples, Comparing them using the constant rule of the difference in the population mean or difference in the population proportion, uh, you take the difference of which one minus which one, it doesn't matter. Because everything will become equivalent and consistent. 
Okay, the conclusion will be consistent. Is there any question? Okay, so see you next week. <coughs>